Welcome to Reclaimed Terrain. This episode is all about how to balance two unique God-given callings while stewarding them both well. I am so excited about this episode today because most people have more than one thing that God is calling them to right now. So for example, you might be running a business, but you're also a mom, or maybe you feel led to start a coaching business, but also publish a book. Those are two completely different callings. Or maybe you're being called to start a business while also starting up a local student ministry. Or maybe you're being called to foster kids while also starting starting a business. Whatever it is, most people have more than one thing that God is calling them to right now. So today's episode is really all about how to steward different callings well, because unfortunately, a lot of people with two or more callings get overwhelmed and wind up really letting one of those callings or maybe all of them just fall through the cracks. And I'm going to be honest, I don't want that for you. So all of that to say, let's go ahead and dive on in. Hey queen, welcome to Reclaim Terrain. I'm your host, Hannah Brindley, daughter of the king, certified life coach, and faith-fueled business mentor. I know you are so sick of feeling like you've worked so hard in your business with little to no reward while staying in the same cycle of self-sabotaging tendencies you know are keeping you stuck. And because of that, I know you are craving to end this never-ending cycle of self-destruction and cultivate a successful Holy Spirit-led business without letting it become your idol. So if you are ready to be fueled by faith over flesh, fight your battle spiritually instead of physically, take bold action on your God-given callings, and finally create that thriving faith-fueled business, then you're in the right place. Go ahead and reheat your coffee, grab a notebook and pen, and let's dive. This is a topic that constantly comes up as I'm working with clients or as I'm talking with members of my community because so many people are balancing many different things, but also God is showing them what is really important and really prompting them and pricking their heart to really pursue these different callings. And what is happening is that even though they feel as if God is calling them to these things, a lot of them just kind of fall through the cracks because they get so caught up in another calling or perhaps they get so caught up in life because life happens and we get busy, right? So today's episode is really inspired by these conversations because this is just happening again and again and again and I am ready to tackle that with you today. Now, I do have a little side note for you. Even if you don't feel like you're being called to multiple things, this episode is still jam-packed with value and I truly believe you will still gain a lot of insight from it simply because we live in such a busy, hyper-focused world. So that being said, I do have five tips for you today to really learn how to steward multiple God-given callings well. So let's go ahead and dive in to tip number one. And this one will probably come to no surprise, but it's something that I just cannot skip over and you'll see why when I tell you. But tip number one is time with Jesus. Listen, If you are wanting to balance multiple God-given callings well, then girlfriend, you have got to spend time with God. He is your fuel. He is your resource, the ultimate resource. He is your daily bread and the living water. So the truth is, You will not be able to steward your God-given callings well if you are not refueling with the Holy Spirit. Now, obviously, God never leaves us. Holy Spirit is dwelling in us, but we need him. And if you are really pursuing something that the Lord has put on your heart, then why aren't you actively wanting to spend more and more time with him? 
because he's the one that's going to give you direction. He's the one that's going to give you clarity. He's the one that's going to make your crooked path straight. It's him. So spend time with him. You don't have to think yourself in circles trying to make things work. You don't have to keep shaming yourself and making yourself feel guilty because you've been procrastinating or letting things fall through the cracks. God has already given you so much grace and he already knows what's going to happen. But girl, like you have got to spend time with him and let these other things go so that he can actually work through you. Because when you let him fuel you, he is going to work through you and the results are going to be so much more profound than you could ever imagine doing it by yourself. So listen, real talk. If you have not put time with him in your calendar, please do it (laughs) like right now. Please just pause this episode and put time with Jesus in your calendar. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't, all these other tips, like you'll be able to do them, but it's not going to work as efficiently because you'll just be trying to do it in your own strength versus letting him flow through you. With all of that said though, we'll move on to tip number two. And tip number two is to start small and establish one consistent action or habit at a time. Now, let me explain. If you are balancing multiple callings right now, or even if you're not, maybe you're just busy, but if you're balancing multiple callings, then you have probably put together, at least at some point, put together a beautiful plan that you would just love to follow every single day to get things done right? And maybe you stay consistent with this plan for a little bit and then something happened and life just threw you a curveball. And with that curveball, your plan basically went out the window. So essentially nothing gets done. And then you're back to square one again, feeling sorry for yourself or down on yourself because you quote unquote procrastinated or because you couldn't stick to your schedule. Let me know if this sounds familiar. If it does, send me a DM over on Instagram at Hannah Brindley and just let me know because I want you to know I totally relate to this, okay? But I'm about to just share with you how you can keep that from happening. So let's repeat tip number two. Tip number two is to start small and establish one consistent action or habit at a time. With your elaborate plan, you probably were trying to establish multiple actions or habits all at once, right? That being said, trying to establish new action items and habits all at once can be super overwhelming. Although I know it can be really exciting for those with an all or nothing personality. I myself have dealt with that, so I totally understand. But slow and steady will actually build sustainability and consistency and then create those results that you are looking for over time. I'm going to give you an example of this in just a moment, but I do want to share that this goes back to what I preach about all the time. And what I preach about all the time is to focus on one thing at a time, which I know might sound a little bit different than what I'm talking about today, but here's what I mean with that. Focus on getting one thing established at a time. So here's an example. Maybe you have a calling to be a writer while also having a calling to have a coaching business. Okay, let's just start the habit of writing every day. Let's just start with that first. So maybe what you do is block out a 30 minute time every single day that you are just going to start writing and that's it. You're not worried about like a coaching business right now. You are just focusing on creating this habit of writing every day because that's going to help you pursue that goal. Now, say a couple weeks later, you've been doing this consistently. You're like, okay, or maybe you've been doing it four weeks now and you've been very consistent with it. Now it's time to add on another thing. 
Maybe that is when you start building a content strategy for social media for your coaching business. But maybe you haven't posted on social media in months. So instead of starting with this really elaborate social media strategy, like where you're posting three reels a day every single day, you actually just start with one every week for four weeks. And then you add on two and then three, and so on and so forth. So you can build that consistency and that sustainability over time. Or maybe the very first habit you need to develop is actually spending time with Jesus. Maybe that's the one you need to focus on first. Start there. Now, this particular tip can be used in multiple different areas. For example, I'm actually doing this method with my podcast. So for example, I started off with my podcast just being a podcast and I post the podcast once a week, okay? That being said, though, a few weeks later, I started incorporating blogs into my podcast. So now, Every podcast episode has a blog post. Well, now at the time of recording this, I'm about to be on Pinterest and my podcast is actually going to be promoted on Pinterest for every single episode. And then a couple of weeks ago, I actually just started with the implementation guide that I'm delivering to you all every single week in your email inbox that actually goes hand in hand with every episode, which by the way, shameless plug, if you have not signed up for the email newsletter, you can go to bit.ly slash power prompts. And that's also linked in the description for you to join the email newsletter where you will receive a weekly implementation guide with action items and journal prompts. So you can actually implement what you learn from this podcast every single week. But I say all of this to say, I did not start off with everything right off the bat. I didn't start off with a blog and getting on Pinterest and the implementation guide as soon as I started the podcast. I just started with posting a podcast episode every single week. And pretty soon I'm going to have two podcast episodes every single week, but I'm building the consistency and the sustainability and the foundation to grow. But like I said, you can do this with basically anything, not just your two or three or four unique God-given callings. You can do this anytime you are wanting to change something, like maybe you want to establish better health habits. You can totally do that using this method as well. Start small and establish one consistent action or habit at a time. And once you become consistent with that, that is when you add on more. If you know the Lord has called you to grow a Holy Spirit-led coaching business, then you should probably listen up. The castle doors to my signature coaching program, Faith Fueled Coach Academy, or FCA, are opening up again so soon. Faith Fueled Coach Academy is a loving community of ambitious, faith-fueled women paired with a supportive curriculum and high-level coaching strategically designed to help you shatter self-doubt and stand out online so you can finally go from unseen to powerful queen. If you are an ambitious, faith-fueled female who is ready to start a coaching business or you are already a coach and you're ready to bring in that consistent full-time income online, then this is for you. Inside of this six-month immersive group coaching experience, you will find yourself fully equipped with all of the business strategies, high-level support, prayer, and accountability you could ever need to turn your God-sized dream into a thriving, faith-fueled coaching business. You will get access to me as I guide you through everything you need to know about stepping into your queen identity, letting the Holy Spirit guide you in your business, and overcoming the limiting beliefs, aka the lies the enemy keeps whispering in your ear. 
With the Holy Spirit guiding us, we will clarify your mission, develop your sustainable and scalable business model, create magnetizing content that will keep your audience coming back for more, utilize simple and effective marketing techniques, and also utilize my daily sales system proven to generate new leads daily and prevent objections like the queen that you are. And yes, you can get paid right off the bat, even if you're just starting. If you are craving to do business God's way and for him, and if you know the importance of being fully led by the Holy Spirit, and if you don't want to get carried away with fleshly desires and are craving how to balance surrender with discipline and taking aligned intentional action, then FCA is for you. If you are feeling that Holy Spirit nudge right now, head on over to www.hannahbrindley.com slash FCA to learn more and to get on the wait list. If you are thinking about this at all, you're going to want to get on the wait list because wait listers will get first access to applications and a discount. This is huge because I am putting a cap on the program so it remains intimate. So please, if you're feeling that nudge, I'll see you on the wait list. Now, this leads us to tip number three, which is that preparation is critical. Once you determine your one consistent action that you want to establish, It's important to determine how many hours a week you need to devote to this small, consistent action. And then once you determine how many hours in a week that you need, that's when you actually need to put it in your calendar. Seriously, put it in your calendar. Go ahead and determine when this is going to happen. So I'm going to give you an example here. Whenever I have a client that is struggling to create content and post it on social media, I will have them choose one day per week where they are going to be posting a piece of content every single week on their social media platform of choice, which we decide then and there at the same time, every single week. We make sure that no matter what, they are getting that post out that day of the week at at that one particular time. That is a non-negotiable. Anything else is bonus, but that is the thing that they are working on staying consistent with. So maybe they block off 30 minutes to actually post it and maybe respond to comments, but then they also have to consider how long they need to actually prepare the post. Now, I don't care if they need an hour to prepare a post, like right before, maybe they just want to prepare the post the day that they post it, or maybe they want to do it a few days before, or maybe they want to batch four weekly posts in one sitting. It doesn't matter. I just have them go ahead and decide when they're actually going to prepare the post. Now, I would prefer that they prepared some in advance just in case like life throws them a curveball one week and they just don't have the time to sit and create it, but they might have to work up to that and that is okay. Now, what does this do? What does establishing this one small consistent action and then preparing for it actually do? It gives you a win because so often people will procrastinate and they will feel like a failure because they're not sticking to things. But that's because they're trying to do multiple things all at once and then everything falls and crumbles underneath them. Well, no wonder they're trying to do so much at once that is so new. But what if you just stuck with one thing? One thing that you are to do no matter what and it needs to be small like I said one social media post every week that is it one and get good at that master that and be proud of that be excited for that and celebrate that and guess what whenever you have a quote-unquote win you're actually more likely to keep going So we really want to let these small wins just build on themselves and help take you to that next step. But now I gave you an example of some business habits. I want to talk about a different calling here. 
Let's say your calling right now, or one of your callings right now, is to be a mom. It's a little more difficult to say, oh, like, I'm going to devote this amount of time to my kids, and then this amount of time to work, and then this amount of time to business. (laughs) Like, that's not exactly feasible, right? Like, especially depending on the kid's age. However, What you can plan for is when you're actually going to spend time with them where you are fully devoted to them without distraction. And depending on their age, you can actually have that conversation with them. You can have them actually help you create your own schedule. Kids love this. Now, obviously, if they are a newborn, that's not going to be feasible. But, you know, again, depending on their age, that might be a really great idea to actually sit down and have a conversation with your kid and be like, hey, let's go ahead and put on a calendar. I'm going to have a calendar and you're going to have a calendar. We're going to color code it together and you're going to see when I'm going to spend time with you and you're going to spend time with me and we're going to play this game and we're going to have so much fun. Let them be a part of that with you and then help them decide what they're going to do during those other times that you're not spending that undivided time with them. And this actually leads me to my next tip, which is to be present. When you are not focusing on, you know, running your business, stop thinking about it. When you are not focused on creating content, Stop thinking about it. You have that time blocked off for a reason. And I'm going to give you a little tip right now that actually changed so much for me. If you need time to think and just think and not necessarily take action, but to think, then block off time in your calendar to think. I do this every week. I literally have time in my calendar where I think. And the reason for this is because I realize that if I don't, I will spend time that I'm supposed to be doing something else thinking. And then I get behind and then I feel like a failure and then nothing gets done. Block off time to think and be present doing whatever it is that you are doing in every given moment. When you have time blocked off to be with your kids, be with your kids. When you have time blocked off to post on social media, post on social media. Don't get distracted by, you know, just scrolling. Focus on becoming very present with what you are doing. This eliminates a ton of mental exhaustion and fatigue as well. And then the last tip I have for you is tip number five, and that is to find accountability. Find a mentor who aligns with your values or find an accountability partner who you can actually share what is going on in your life to. Find a group of people who can hold you accountable to stay consistent with these small consistent actions so you can steward all of your God-given callings well. Find a buddy who is going to do it with you. You don't have to do this alone. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to be in community with one another. That's how God made us. I am a huge believer in fostering and being a part of communities. And that being said, of course, my coaching offers actually contain a community element that is really important for me and also for my clients. Now, that being said, my signature coaching offer, Faith Fueled Coach Academy or FCA, is opening up again so soon. So if you are looking to grow your Holy Spirit-led coaching business and actually have a community of other like-minded women around you and holding you accountable and supporting you through all of it, then you definitely want to check out FCA and you can do this by going to www.hannabrindley.com slash FCA and that is going to be linked in the description for you and in the show notes for you as well. Doors aren't open yet, 
but they will be opening up soon. So that being said, you're going to want to get on the wait list because wait listers will have first access to applications and a discount. And this is really important because I do like to keep this community intimate for new people coming in. So just make sure that if you are interested at all, definitely get on the wait list. And again, you can check that out by going to www.hannahbrindley.com slash F C A. And I really hope that I get to see you inside. Hey queen, don't head out just yet. If this podcast has blessed you in some way, it would mean the absolute world to me if you left a written review of the show over on Apple Podcasts. It truly lights a fire in me knowing how God has impacted you through this platform. And since I absolutely adore connecting with you, please, please, please screenshot this episode or your review and post it on your stories on Instagram and tag me at Hannah Brindley. I can't wait to see you over there. So much love to you.